listening to the bomb hole. Bomb hole podcast. It's going to be very hot. It's going to be very uncomfortable for everybody. <laughs> the bomb hole. I'm going to slide down in big hills. You know what I mean? On the big, nice burgundy snowboard. Okay, here we go. We're back in the booth, back in the garage for another episode of the bomb hole, which is presented by Liquid Death and Pub Beer. Now, I got to say, Stony Buds, the resi, it's got a good flop. The resi tippini is looking solid. Today. Thank you. <laughs> it, feel, it feels good. How you feeling? So good, my dog. Love that. Uh, to my left, we have Zeb Powell. Zeb, what's happening? Nothing, you know. Um, just glad to be here. Thanks for having me, Chris. Well, Stoked to talk to you guys. We are very Happy to have you here. Where are you coming in from? You flew in this morning. I'm coming from SoCal. Um, I was in San Clemente chilling with Jordan Smalls, Pat Vava, the Fava bros actually, Pat and Joey, and um, also Lars. We were filming for their new show, Grilling Me Smalls. Yeah, I heard uh, Jordan Smalls has been getting busy on the grill out oh. there. What was he cooking? Some ribs? What are we talking? Cooked ribs and mammoth. Sweet potato tacos last night. They slapped so good. Um, he's got these dope smash burgers. Um, yeah, um, it was pretty much living in paradise for the last, like, four days, four or five days. Actually, no, I've been there for, like, a week and a half, actually. But the last few days have been paradise because, like, we've been doing the show, like, and, like, doing fun stuff for it. Um, I went golfing for the first time. Yeah, how'd you hit him? Um, I actually, <laughs> I almost sunk one my second tee off. Like, uh, you're talking about a hole-in-one? Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> beginner's um, it was beginner's like, luck on those. <laughs> it, was, it was like, um, it was like kind of a small, like, I can't. A part of three. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I almost, yeah, I almost slunk one for, like, second tee off. Dude, that, that if would, you that went first time golfing, like, and you got a hole-in-one, that's, like, would be remarkable. People would lose their shit. I, 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 by the end of the game, I was, like, um, fighting for, um, Second to last place, but I almost sunk one second try, and I was shooting, or hitting him, um, switch. What you you going lefty or righty? That's that would be righty. Righty, and you're so, naturally a lefty. I usually swing left. You almost got a switch hole in one. They didn't have switch the right clubs for you, or no? He only had um right righties. Yeah. yeah, righties, and he's a lefty. Ooh. Yeah, holy um, shit! So maybe I need to start golfing righty instead. Yeah. Sounds like it's working, whatever you're doing here. Yeah. And you were eating good, just living in paradise, huh? That sounds like a good trip right there. It was insane. It literally felt like paradise. Uh, for, it was, yeah. For the I listeners think. unfamiliar, I believe Grilling Me Smalls, he's doing a little YouTube show uh, with cooking and board sports, I'd imagine, right? Yeah. And, um, yeah, just having fun. It's, it's a great time. It felt like paradise. I think it'll continue to feel like paradise when you do the shows. Love that. Uh, so we were just in uh, Mammoth, Mammy, uh, Red Bull Recharged event, and uh, we got a million questions about the uh, the viral clip, which broke the internet, which you've done many times, where you went up the lip and at the top of the lip caught your heel edge, flew, did a perfect back rodeo, and landed. Now, A, was that intentional, and B, walk us through what you're trying. Okay. So, no, it wasn't intentional. Not at all. Not in the slightest. Um, so, like, I think a day or two before, Judd did the front one, nose butter, dub. Was it dub nine? He started, like, he went switchback five, switchback seven, switchback nine, and then switch back eventually switchback ten. Yeah. yeah. Butter into all those. Yeah, so we were chilling, talking about that, and then I was like, I wonder if you can do a backside. And, um. Yeah, we just like thought about that for a second and then just kind of went on with our day. <laughs> Didn't think about it again until I was going up the lip of the jump when I did that trick. Um, yeah, so I was going in. I was like setting up for backside. Don't know what I was going to do. Um, but I was just like, you know, I had to wind up for backside. And then halfway up the lip, I was like, oh, yeah. Like the switch back one better. So I was like, I'll try that really fast. Um, it's a really big lip, so like you got had a lot have a lot of time to think about it. Like it's like a nice gradual up. So I was like, okay, like yeah, it'll be good. Um, I guess I didn't calculate enough and just ended up catching my heel edge. And um, yeah, next thing I knew, I was just like, 
like flying like over the the gap like back to the ground just like whoa i wasn't really scared though i wasn't like tripping i was just more like oh my god i can't believe that just happened before i even hit the ground because like the second i like looked at the knuckle i was like okay i'm fine like and i knew i was like that's why i like everyone thinks it's intentional because like i'm just chilling but definitely was not intentional i was just like i knew it was gonna be all good and you stomped I didn't stomp. I like it's kind of like kind of put my hand down, like reverted. Yeah, he landed. Angle, he landed. Yeah, it sounds like a land. The angle was shot from above, so it's hard to tell We're exactly. Gotta make. Oh, like also, I've only seen that clip once, and I've only seen the stomp. Like I only know I, I kind of like, thought I stomped, but I only know I didn't stomp is because they showed the clip in the highlights when you were watching it at recharge. But I have yet to see the clip. Mm-hmm. I think I think I've lost like. I feel like I filmed so many clips there, but I haven't seen any of them. So mm-hmm. I, I don't know what's up. I'm sure they'll put out a big fat edit. I really... Yeah, I'm, the runs came out. There's yeah. so much footage. So yeah. is there like a ton more footage? I'm guessing like, there's like a TV show that goes on Red Bull TV with it, I think, as well. So are they just hiding a ton of footage from us? There's a... I think they're doing a little footage. Uh, they're just... Holding they're locking, it hostage. They're holding it hostage, yeah. Waiting, oh. waiting for the proper moment for TV, probably. That's what it feels like. Okay. Well, Makes I was also now. thinking about this because you used to ride nitro boards that are way softer, I'd imagine, I'm, right? Or were they not? Are they the same flex? I honestly couldn't tell you. I think you're on a this the board. I remember I was telling you you were when we were at recharge. You were like noodling out like on everything, and you set up a sixty two, right? Yeah, this was. I don't know if I set th- that board up before. You did. I know that for sure. Okay, you're on yeah. the new board that day. Yeah, and I was thinking, holy shit, he's like maybe the reason why he hooked is because. You were on, you went from a little smaller board to the big dog, like a 62 mm-hmm. hog, right? And then that makes it more difficult to do like butters and stuff on a big board as opposed to a smaller, softer board. It's more playful, you know? True. Could have had something to do with it, but worked out, <laughs> worked out how it's supposed to. Yeah. I actually tried it again after that and, um, yeah, just wasn't feeling it. I like tried it again, like, was like played it a little bit safer and like just like skimmed over. Mm hmm. Like, flu but it was still sick the clip was amazing yeah that's i think you might want to keep working that one in yeah figure yeah. that we'll, out the we'll, right scenario we'll figure it out it'll pop in my head again going up a lip sometimes that, so. now that's what i want to get into this is like a new phenomenon that is like uh kind of like it seems to me that when you're riding and you're cruising around when do you make the decision to try the trick you're going to try off of let's just say a jump i don't know you never know. <laughs> Even when you're in the air. <laughs> I was actually, I was in an interview with Mary Walsh a while back, and I've never really known how to, known how to explain it, but it's more of like a feeling. Like, <laughs> um, most of like my, like, most like, like the stuff people like drop their jaws over, it, it's like stuff I usually drop my jaws over too, because like I never even realized or like, Pretty much, I'm just like having fun with my friends, and then like um, we're like messing around, and like there's like no stress at all. It's just like a great time, and pretty much I just land, or like I'm riding into a jump, and I think just like from being happy and stuff, or I don't even know, it just pops into my head something. I'm like, oh wait, like maybe I'll like try to go this way or tweak it this way or like. I I can't. It's so hard to explain. No, I'll I'll tell you one person that articulated, and this is a new phenomenon to me because, for the average person, I think they're like, if I'm, if I'm gonna do a seven twenty on the jump, I'm at the top and I'm like, okay, this run I'm doing a fucking seven twenty. It's like a different deal, right? But I, Dusty Hendrickson is very, he has a very similar approach. Like when I was talking to him, he's like, I don't really know what I'm gonna do till I get to the lip, and he told me. He did a back radio seven at Red Bull Recharge on one of the half pipe hits to the jump landing. And I hadn't seen him do one the whole week. And he I asked him about it. He said, I don't know. I just got to the lip and that's what my body wanted to do. It seems like that's how you are. Like you get to the jump and whatever your body kind of wants to do, you fling it that way. Yeah. I was actually talking to him. I'm not like I've hung out with him a little bit, but I like never like really like got to chill and talk to him. And I feel like we just kind of jive the same way too. Like generally, like I think we have the same approach to snowboarding. He's a dope dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude. I almost think it's just when he hits like his flow state, he's just can do whatever he wants. Yeah, 
Yeah. And then it's just that like, oh, this is all right. I'm doing this. It's like your special meter in like Tony Hawk. Yeah, Pro he skater. hit that, and yeah. then bam. Exactly. Okay, I can do this trick. Well, that's a, I feel like Zeb's special meter is. That, I don't know if you're talking about Zeb or Dusty, but I'm talking you know, both talking of about, them. Yeah, but, like, but both Zeb. your special meters, they just like get cranked up to eleven, and you guys just yeah. And yeah, for the record, I don't think I was in my flow state for my finals run. So anyone who watched it, that was definitely not the flow state. That wasn't it. It, I actually, <laughs> the day before, I actually figured out like half the tricks I was doing for it, and um, yeah, I was actually just not down at all. Like the day before, I was like, I just like everyone, everyone's kind of riding. I'm just like, I don't really, I don't know. I'm not feeling it. Like, wasn't really like even like having that much fun. I was just kind of cruising. And then I like dropped in one run. Oh, um, I was like, dro- I, like I started playing music out of my pocket, and um, um, yeah, Jesse J came on. Domino, the song by Jesse J came on, and um, I dropped in, and yeah, it, <laughs> my whole run just went pretty much. Like I like landed my rippy flip. I tried it for the first time, and then landed it the best I like landed the whole time. A lot, and then second run or your practice. You're saying? Oh no, this was the day before. Day before, got it. Yep. This was like the final or like qualifiers day. Yep. Yeah, like yeah, I did the rippy flip, and then I was like boosting dub cripplers, which I've never done on the side hit, and um, yeah, those were all like pretty new to me, so that was like super sick. But uh, yeah, finals day didn't really go the same way at all. <laughs> Uh, one thing we got to talk about too is that that uh fifty fifty rippy flip on the pole jam was like unreal. What what was was that in, like? You got to it and you're like, oh, I'm gonna chuck this, or did you have that planned out? Well, I wanted to flip it, but it was like the running for it was like kind of tight. Like the tranny was kind of fast, so it was like hard to like get comfortable into it because it's like when you're on a rail like that, like if you're not board sliding right or whatever, you like slip out. So it's like kind of hard to adjust that or. Um, kind of mess with that so i didn't want to go sideways on it i wasn't think i don't think i was taking rippy but um one of the red bull like managers Derek, who i came up with so i kind of know him i dropped like i just took a run with him and he's like hey like they're setting up to um hit the up rail or the cannon so like you should hit that next run and i was like okay i'm still not really feeling it but like whatever and then I dropped like I went went up that run and um yeah that song came on and I was just like feeling it and that just trick just was like yeah let's do that and like I said it and just like couldn't really see the landing I just like stomped down and like just I just went and it was so sick yeah he was doing those the whole time and every time you're just like holy shit <laughs> yeah um go and one thing I heard when you were talking to one of the cameras before for whatever, an interview for with Red Bull, you said, like, I want to knock the contest kids off their island. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want you to elaborate on what you meant by that, and uh, do you find motivation, like, proving people wrong, or was that, what was that statement all about? Uh, like, so, you mean, I, I think I said, no, I said, like, get them off their high horse. Something like that. Yeah, whatever it was. Same, same general. <laughs> whatever, I, I might have butchered that. So I apologize. If same so. effect, though. Yeah, get them off their high horse. I feel like, you know, they know they got the tricks. They know what's good. Like, they kind of, like, think they got it, which they pretty much do. Like, hold it down, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to give it to them there for sure. Um, but I don't know. It's like, I feel like also, it's like, if I, got a, if I get a full pull, like, uh, I feel like it's, like, you, it's, like, really unlikely for me to full pull, but if I do a full pull, it's, like, oh, Full pull, you mean top to bottom? Pull top everything? to bottom. Yeah, it was like a if I, the listeners. Mm-hmm. If I get the flow state. <laughs> it's on. It, yeah. I think, either, it, like, no matter what, you're either going to make it and do the most miraculous run ever done on a snowboard, or you're going to, like, fall and make it into a trick. But either way, it's going to be the most goddamn exciting run that entire day, you know? And, uh, yeah, that's that seems to be what happened. The backflip into the whoops was also fucking no regard for safety. While we're talking about tricks, I was hyped on that. That was like so unsafe. I was like, I was, I was so lost in those whoops all week. I think like the day before and that day, like I was like, well, also because you come into them so fast from the jumps, I was like, and like there's one before like the doubles. So like I can never release, like you're going in so fast. I want to go fast. Like 
So like when I come in, I'm like I like kind of like almost want to double the first one, and then it messes me up for that one, and then you get faster and faster. Mm-hmm. So it's just hard to like it was just hard for me to like feel them out in the first place. Those are fun. I think Park should build more whoops like that. Yeah, or rhythms. I like them. It was just like really hard to navigate them, just like because you can't see. Okay. But, um, once I got it, it was it was sick. I wish I got to do more. Even I only had three runs. Like the flips, the flip came out like. That run, I don't think I had done it before. I mean, we've we've been kind of chatting about uh, recharge. Now, I kind of want to throw it back to where you grew up. You should uh, paint a picture for our listeners of where you're from and uh, what your family environment was like and all that stuff. Where I'm from, okay, so I'm from North Carolina, Waynesville, North Carolina. Yeah, shouts out Waynesville, NC, um, Cam Pierce. Austin Leonard, Luke Winkleman, Riley Tardif, he's a skater. He was out in Oregon. We got a lot of we got a lot of heavy hitters. Brantley Mullins, he's com- she's coming up too. Um Yeah, I'm from North Carolina, Waynesville, Catalucci. That's the mountain I ride. It's super small. It's on top of a hill though, or like on top of a mountain kind of. Um we actually our mountains are just as big um, as the um, as, as the mountains in Vermont, we just don't get like the weather to like support it. I kind of I grew up riding a super like a, not a I guess yeah it's a pretty small park actually, <laughs> um, but luckily we had a um, dope dope park crew. Actually, um, like the Sutton Bros, they used to ride for Air Blaster, so like they like they knew it was good actually, and um, yeah my. Dad's best friend took me snowboarding for the first time, and luckily he was friends with them. So they took he took me to the train park the first day, or I think I went. I saw the train park because it's right under the bunny slope um, lift, and I was like, I want to go there. And um, yeah, so I, I think I hit a box the first night, and I think they kind of saw the potential from there, and they just kind of I kept, and then I started going so much. And um, I just started being in the park every day, pretty much. So they became kind of my mentors. And, um, yeah, they would just kind of tell me to do tricks and stuff. And then, this, but the park was still pretty small, so it didn't get, like, a ton of jumps. Or we didn't have jumps because it was so small. And we didn't really have the means to build them. But luckily, our mountain had a ton of sidewalls. So I kind of learned how to ride, like, low-key learned how to ride, ride tranny there without even thinking about it. Without even knowing what tranny is, really. I think I learned how to do it or ride it. Along with just, like, learning how to, like, find like side hits or like find places to get air because like i love flying through the air as a kid so um that's like uh, i still do it's like (laughs) that's a big part of my riding i think so that mountain taught me how to do a lot with a little and um i think it shows in my riding still today you know i can have fun on any mountain i feel like Like, it doesn't really matter if the park's good or not no, that's such a like unbelievable thing. There's all these great riders from all over. You have, you know, we had Mark McMorris on. He's from this tiny little hill in uh, Canada. You know, you have Jed Anderson's from a tiny little hill. A lot of people from the East Coast grew up riding small hills. You got Luke Winkleman. Grew up. Now, why do you think that riders from these tiny little hills go on to become such great snowboarders? I mean, is it, is it what you just described? And yeah, I mean, I think learning how to do a lot with a little. It's like when you have nothing, like when you're not much in front of you, like you still kind of want to, you know, do the damn thing. I mean, you learn how to do the damn thing without a lot in front of you. And then once you see a lot in front of you, it's like you got the advantage of the upper hand. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it shows. <laughs> I was watching the your X Games uh, being thing, and you're like a little. He's like a bobblehead kid hitting a corrugated <laughs> tube. You look like you're like four years old. Hey, how old were you that first time you were taken out? I think those were when I was like nine or ten. Didn't really know what I was doing. I was just kind of doing it. <laughs> now, uh, growing up, I know uh, you were adopted, and you have a racially diverse family. What What was it like growing up? Just seems like you know. All ethnicities covered. Seems like your family. Your, I talked to your mom. Let's give her an air horn. She's awesome. What was your I family think. life like growing up? So I'm the youngest of four or youngest of five. Um, next oldest is my sister. We're at the years apart. She's black, Asian, and Indian. I think. 
Um, then I have my brother. He's just black. And um, I have um, an, another brother, actually. Um, I think he's Korean. Um, I think he's Korean. Um, he is mildly autistic, actually, with Asperger's. And then we actually have, and then we have a, um, my um, oldest sister, who is actually um, blood, or like, what's the word for that? Yeah, you, you guys are related. I would right. say, bl- yeah, like, actu- like truly, like blood related to yeah. my pa- my parents, like my oldest sister is. So my parents had one kid, and then they adopted four more. Your parents sound awesome. After like raising them, they were like, "We are not having more kids. So <laughs> we are never <laughs> adopting a kid." <laughs> and then, um, but we they had such a good por- portfolio with the adoption company, like Bethany, I think. So like, even if we weren't didn't want to, like they would still ask. So the company hit us up, or like hit um us up for Scout and me, I think, at different times, of course. But um, I'm pretty sure even after Scout, they're like, "We're not having another kid." <laughs> But um, from yeah, for me, I think they were just in church one day, and um, yeah, they randomly got a call, and were like, hey, there's like four babies who are up for adoption, um, like, do you want to take one? And um, they were like, yeah, sure. Like, not even like, so it was like, <laughs> they just one, said yes, right? There. Like one, I, I think it was we, something. We don't want to do. We don't. Oh, yeah, why done. not? Let's yeah, do it. I think I think it was something <laughs> like that. Like. Mm-hmm. Like one, like, like one for a chance. Like we have four babies up for adoption. Um, would you like to take one? Pretty much, because um, I guess we have a really good for- portfolio. Because my parents are sick in the first place. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's if you talk to your mom, kid, you talk to your mom, and you're like, these guys are awesome. Like, it's <laughs> she's such a sweetheart. So easygoing. And, and that was another thing I wanted to talk about too, because it's like you've had some some great successes and. And I always find it fascinating. It's so easy to become a cocky prick or, you know, ego the size of the fucking country, <laughs> you know, whatever. There's all these things that come along with a little mild fame. And you've you've experienced some fame and you've managed to stay extremely humble. Now, I, I, I know that your mom mentioned that your your dad maybe has a role <laughs> in that. What do you think about that? <laughs> he hammered it into my brain. So, I mean... I don't know if it was natural or not, but I mean, I just hate, hate like the fact, like being cocky. I, like, there's no point. There's always someone better than you. Like, always someone better than you. So, like, why, why would you be cocky? You think you're the shit, you know? I mean, I think that's just, that's my two cents. Like, that's, like, that's my quote. You can quote that in the first place. But my dad, like, growing up, he was like, stay humble. Like, stay humble. Always be humble. Like, stay humble, stay humble. My dad would hammer hammer stuff into my head, like just always, like to the point where I'm like, "Dad, I know, like, shut up, like well, you know, like or like he like you know start going on a rant and like me and my dad, me and my mom would look at each other like, oh, here he goes again, but it, he means well, like so it's, <laughs> <laughs> I, I get it, no, but it, it works because for real, dude, it's an important trait, it's yeah. an important trait, and I will say this, like we when we would what did we do, loon spot check, what was that two years ago? We were riding Loon, and I have never seen anything like this. We were cruising around, and I've been with, like, Danny Cass. I've been with a lot of pros that are, like, very notable over the years and spent some time riding with them. And uh, it's been, like, some people get fans and get fanned out on. And when we were at Loon, I've never seen anything like that. Everywhere you go, people are like, holy shit, Zeb Powell, can I get a picture? Oh, fuck, that in the lift line whispers, oh, my God, is that Zeb Powell? And you're doing selfies, and you're doing photos, (laughs) and you're doing all this stuff all the time. And now it's even, you know, after the knuckle huck, which we'll get into, it's kind of expedited and and gotten even bigger. But it really is, like, you really have stayed very, very humble in in all of that. And, And how do you deal with all that as well? I just kind of let it pass me by. Like it's it's so cool to see fans though. Like freak out and like love the fans. Thank you, fans. It's so sick. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> um, Let's give the fans an air horn. Yeah. Shouts out. Thanks for all the fans. Love it. Um, let's see. What's the question? I mean, well, I I just want to say like you you've like when you ride the resort, it's it's almost like hard for you to go anywhere sometimes. Like at Bear, didn't you have an experience like that? Big bear. bear like it's usually i can deal with it usually like um it usually like we'll be riding it's funny i'll be riding with friends and stuff and, like we'll be having a good time and um there's usually like i can kind of tell like it kind of like from the second i get to the mountain to like 
probably like two hours into riding, I can kind of tell like people are starting to notice. They're like, they're like, like a group of kids will start to notice and like kind of look and like pass by and they won't like do anything. Or like, but I can kind of like feel the energy, mm-hmm. and then eventually, like they get the courage, and um, I'll stop like at the bottom, or like I'll roll up to the top. I get off the lift, and they're like, "Yo, can I get a photo?" And then, uh, it's it's became such a thing. Like me and my friends have like come up with a term for it. It's a snowball effect. So it's like one will be like, "Yo, can I get a photo?" And I'm like, "Yo, sure, like sick," and then another will be like, "Oh, can I get one too?" And yeah. I'm like, "Yep, yeah, sure." And then, like, another, and then another, and then another. And it's, like, so sick. But then it's, like, starts to be, like, oh, gosh. Like, my friends, like, they'll laugh at it for the first, like, three. Like, almost, like, take a picture or whatever. But then, like, the snowball effect just keeps going and going. And then next thing you know, it's, like, five minutes later. And I look up and they're gone. <laughs> they, <laughs> like, they go and take a lap. They're, right? like, okay. <laughs> this is this is too much. they like... <laughs> classic <laughs> once one kid sees you're down to do it the other guys are like let me yeah get yeah it's because i think they're scared that i'm gonna be like no or well like, also know. yeah let them know too if they do see you on the hill do go say what up to zeb yeah i mean i've i'm i'm i can't be mean it's just not in my blood mm-hmm. i can't be like no like fuck you mm-hmm. like and if i am like i which i wouldn't ever say fuck you to someone probably but if i like like look the other way or like pass you by it's probably because i didn't notice or like I've probably just had too many people come up to me, and I'm, like, almost stressed. I, like, have anxiety because my friends have left me, <laughs> and I'm just trying to get to them. Mm-hmm. So, like, I just kind of, like, like sometimes, like, once there's too many, I, like, try to get out of there and, like, straight line down mm-hmm. to find my friends again because I'm, like, I don't know, having a good time with them. Well, you were explaining but, to me that then this year you destroyed your knee, uh, and you ended up jumping this giant table to flat, but... uh you said that day was crazy, particularly. That day. Okay, yeah. So, like, everything I explained to you before, that's, like, a normal day. Like, like a generally a normal day at a new mountain or whatever. And that's sick. I can deal with that. But, like, that day, like, we were filming to uh, fil- filming for my um, new, like, clothing line. Or, like, 32 stuff. Like, the 32 stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, and getting photos, like, just, like, a ton of assets and stuff. And, um, yeah, I, that, I've... I've never had a day where I don't have a second to myself, but that day I literally, I felt like a like true full on celebrity. Like there wasn't like a point where I wasn't taking a selfie with someone or had like, there wasn't like the whole day I either was taking a selfie with someone, someone's watching over me, wa- like watching over me riding, like, like kind of like laying back watching, but not like far enough to like, you know, for me not to notice, like, like almost like, Almost in my space. Yeah. And that was a whole day. Like, there was not a second to myself. And um, so, yeah, there was <laughs> this huge hip. Um, and I was like, oh. Or, like, or we were trying to figure out what to film on again. We were, like, at the top of that drop. Or what? Do you know what the place is called in Bear? Like, with all the tranny and stuff. I don't know the names of the zones. But I do know what you're talking about. Yeah. So, so there's a big that, hip at the bottom of that, yeah. right? At the and bottom of the hill. Jeff was like, yo, what do you want to film on? And I was like... Uh, I don't. I don't really know. Like, just like, kind of tired. Like, not really feeling it anymore. And um, I was like, I don't know. I think I'm gonna try to gap the hip. He's like, you, you want to go check it out first? And I'm like, yeah, I guess I'll do that. And then I just dropped in and like started tucking. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I got dropped in. I think I rode for like 20 feet, and I was like, yeah, I'm just do it. Like, just started tucking. And of course, I wasn't gonna make it. Like, I. Like, a normal person would be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go, like, check it out. Like, he just said. But I just didn't. And, um, yeah, tried to gap it. Came up, like, 20 feet short. Landed. But, um, yeah, my knee hurt immediately. <laughs> and I was like, oh, God damn it. Like, why the fuck did I do that? Like, and I think just having too, too much, too much... What's the word? Or like, what's the too saying? much vinegar or what? What are we talking? That's like fam. Like it's just the you got to you mentally that day and you just weren't even thinking right, huh? Yeah, it's like what's that thing they say about fame? Drives can drive people crazy. You see like, a lot of those real famous people. Yeah, it's like too much fame is like. It's like, why you see Kanye like freaking out in a McDonald's <laughs> yelling at everybody. I all, understand. Or Michael Jackson or something. They just don't. <laughs> They never have a moment to themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Kanye. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. 
<laughs> it's like <laughs> was a, you, seen, you seen that video? I haven't seen that. <laughs> There's this paparazzi or something like that. <clears throat> At his house, like hiding behind the car, it's like dark out. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a ca- camera. He's like just filming. Like Kanye comes out of his house, or like maybe he just pulled up in the car. Yeah, and he's like, and the filmer's like, "Good morning, Kanye," <laughs> and he's like, "Shut the fuck up." Hey, good morning, Kanye. Shut the fuck up, <laughs> <laughs> dude. What about? Uh, and so I just recently learned that the video of the guy <laughs> wallying the jet ski with the girl in the back. Have you seen that? I think so. Is Kanye. Did you know that? <laughs> yeah, what? Allegedly, I've heard that Allegedly. that's Kanye. I don't know. I was told it was Kanye. Dude, you know that where the ski it goes airborne onto the beach? Yeah. Dude, unbelievable. No way. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, there's, some, <laughs> there's some incredible gotta, memes. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It's crazy that I've never heard of snowboarding getting so crazy like that unless you're in Japan back in the 90s. Oh, yeah, true, huh? <laughs> yeah, it yeah. used to be madness. <laughs> Got a lot of Japanese fans, too. They're sick. Like, yeah. Zeb, they gonna, used Zeb's to, like, go crazy. It's like, <laughs> if I'm Zeb, shut the fuck up! <laughs> <laughs> you should just switch dude, and go Kanye mode. Dude, on it's, it's actually... It's like, I'll, do, I'll do this sometimes. I don't mean it at all, but... <laughs> There'll be some people who come, up, can I get a photo? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> just like, dead face, no. <laughs> and they're like, oh, <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> yeah, and then you just kidding. <laughs> make him, just make him sweat. Make him yeah. sweat for a minute. They're I all guess, like, oh dude. my God. <laughs> uh, there's actually this one, I was at, so um, I live in Burlington now, and um, <laughs> I went to the beach for the first time this summer. Um, and it was a crazy day at the beach. Or not not even summer. It was the spring. There was like so many people. And like I never been to the North Beach. But um um yeah, I guess it's like where all the college kids go. And yeah, it was there's like, concerts it was there like sometimes. The, yeah, or something like that. But like it was the first warm day there. And um I didn't really know how it'd be. I was like, Oh, you know, like first day here, like guess we'll see. And I like started like walking up to the crowd where everyone is and um I was like kind of nervous, like kind of intimidated. And like, like trying to find my friends, I was like, "Damn, like it's a lot of people." And then, like within like three seconds, like someone saw me or someone noticed me, and like I was like, "Oh shit, I forgot." I'm, I'm Zeb Powell, <laughs> in a snowboard town, Burlington. Yeah. So <laughs> then, like throughout the day, that just proceeded to happen, <clears throat> and um, yeah, I got got pretty rowdy. So I don't even like remember this part, but uh, my friend was telling me like. One homie came up and he was like, "Yo, are you that Powell?" And I was just straight up like, "No." <laughs> and he just away. walked away. <laughs> he's like, "He's like, oh," and walked away. <laughs> I don't remember it at all. Oh my god! I don't. I feel bad. I'm sorry if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> Let's give that guy an air horn in case he is. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, but I love my fans. Well, we got to pivot because we got to talk about something that's on the docket here for the listeners and viewers. Um, So I I caught wind that um, basically uh, there's some foot races that happened in Mammoth. I know uh, Clavin raced you in a foot race. Um and Red Gerard raced you in a foot race and uh, Sean Fitzsimmons too actually Sean Fitzsimmons is Fitzsimmons as well Simons and I heard Simons. I heard they all lost now uh, I consider myself an athlete that's in peak physical condition um so I figured I'm much better athlete than those guys I will definitely uh, destroy you so I see, um, I see you I see I see I see you in the gym yeah I, I see you with. With, oh yeah, with hail and a uh, sage. Oh yeah, we're on. The, we go to absolute war on the squat rack, sniffing salts, chalk, getting after it. Yeah, we go. We just turn into straight up bro. We go from snowboarders. We go. We walk in the gym. We're bros. And snowboarders bros. to bro boarders. <laughs> bro boarders. Bro boarders. Chest <laughs> out. Just uh, uh, is that a thing? Bro boarders. Uh, yeah, maybe now. Now it is. Yeah. Bro boarders. Mm-hmm. <laughs> bros that board. Jabrodes. So. So what? Ha- so when you came here, um, basically, I-, I challenged you to a foot race. We'll insert the footage for the video, but um, <laughs> it, the warm up footage and all that. We we kind of uh, built it up. Okay, it's fast. <laughs> 
fast. He's fast. Oh man. I gotta give it to you. That's, that was that was quick. That was quick. Explain what happened with the foot race. <laughs> I smoked you. <laughs> <laughs> um I I go I I go <laughs> into this guy tells it how it is. I I go into competitions and such. <laughs> <laughs> I got destroyed there. Yeah. I go into competitions and such. Like um, I go in neutral. I don't like I don't like brag. I don't try to talk myself up. Depending on what it is, I guess. <clears throat> like I don't know if like the competition's like intense or whatever. Like yeah, I'll go in neutral. Like just throw them off. But like I just generally don't want to like you know. Talk myself up and then lose, but I don't want to, like, you know, That's what it's just, be, exactly. be cocky. Chris was talking himself up for yeah. a good 30, 45. Exactly. I don't maybe, want to also, also. Maybe actually three days. Also, I don't want to be cocky and win or, like, I don't know. Yeah, whatever, I love that. I guess. He loves to be cocky. And I'm win. more like an Ocho Cinco <laughs> kind of vibe out there, you know. <laughs> but I tried. I had a lot of advantage. Sniffing salts. I hit those before. Yep. Uh, eye black, you know, just in case the sun, the sun wasn't hit you. right? Um the you running know, shoes. I had running shoes on. You were in skate shoes. Uh, you were also fresh off of a plane. Uh, mm. I had gone to the gym this morning and kind of loosened up. I don't lace my shoes either. Yep. So your uh, shoes weren't even laced out there. No, I, I, <laughs> uh, this is this is for skate. I this is what I run twenty four seven. Twenty four seven. I don't tie my shoes. I just stuff them in, stuff them in, and um, go. Yeah. Wow. Um, How did you compare to the guys? It's out a stuff in and go situation. <laughs> stuff and go. It's a stuff. Yeah. We got a stuff and go. <laughs> it's scenario. a classic right. stuff and classic. go. It's funny. <laughs> it's funny too because sometimes I like just like step in and like one of the laces will fly out and I won't notice because like, I don't look. And then I'll be like halfway through the store or like in a public area and look down and my shoes just like my lace is just like flying. I'm like, oh, that's bad looks. Like, Runs a loose operation. Oh, with loose up. <clears throat> yeah. But I still, I, I just, I hate tying my shoes. They come untied anyways. So, well, you, you so he's basically you, saying he beats you with his shoes untied. I, I mean, <laughs> and in jeans. Hey, we and, also, and in jeans. We also, I was wearing athletic uh, gear for the listeners. Uh, <laughs> I was wearing a tank top, shorts, running shoes, <laughs> eye black, uh, <laughs> sniffing salts, and he was literally off a plane with jeans and shoes. <laughs> so, uh, I got. <laughs> Every every advantage, every advantage you can have. <laughs> the uh, stepping salts. We also, for the listeners that didn't see us, we had a uh, basically a, a, a parachute that I found. Uh, we it was like an NFL training set, so we were running full speed of the parachute behind us to try to improve our time. <laughs> he actually caught flames. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> true. I we thought were, he, caught, he caught flames. <laughs> One thing we got to touch on is uh, the fact that we also ran forty yard dashes with times. Uh, I, I ran a five one, something like that. Uh, which I know that when Brady was drafted, he he, he should, ran I, a, should I Google it? He ran a five two eight. Oh, you Google it five two eight. Yeah. So I'm um, technically, I mean, uh, and then uh, Zeb ra- ran a four five. four eight four nine. I think so. Yeah. It was in the fours. In the fours for sure. And um, yeah. So uh, that's more like closer to like a DK Metcalf who runs like a four three three something like that. You know all those tests you do like. Middle school, I think. Like, like the running long yeah, they jump have and that. all that stuff? I like the like annoying stuff that you don't want to do. Like we had like, we had this like 40 yard dash. I think we had like a triple jump, single leg, and like double leg. We had like this T drill thing. Anyways, yeah. Going back to the 40 yard dash. I think, I think my best was 4-6 maybe. Ooh. I don't know. God damn. You weren't that far off. No, I, I mean, feel like I, that, it, that timing mm-hmm. wasn't necessarily like perfect. Uh, Oh, true. Oh, but, yeah. But I think that, like, I feel like you're closer to a four six when I was watching you run that. I think it was, it was, um, yeah. I, I think it's written down somewhere. I think they record those. <laughs> it's written down somewhere. I think, that, I think in the I, school logs. Yeah. See, I know, like, you're talking about it being annoying in middle school, but it's like I, I want there to be like a snowboarders NFL combine. <laughs> yeah. Why not? <laughs> you know. It, it was like um, the one in high school was even more annoying though. It was like, it was like an intense one, mm-hmm. and like we had to do it. It's like we get basically like we get to school like from wherever we are, and like the first like week is like pretty much just hell week because like we're like coming from like just chilling during the summer to like full on like you're talking about SMS right? Yeah, SMS yep. like full on physical testing like mm-hmm. yeah physical testing that's what it's called like now going back to your early days from North Carolina, I know you eventually made the migration to SMS, and I know. 
Ross Powers Foundation and you, a couple things like that. That all those things helped get you over there, right? Shouts out to that. Yeah, give shouts out to that. Yeah, I definitely would not be able to um, be where I am today without that. Well, that kind of brings us to a great segue uh, from the man himself, Ross Powers, in regards to your time over at SMS. Here we go. Hey, bomb hole, Ross Powers here. What's up, Chris Eastone? Stoked you guys got Zeb on today. Hanging out here at Stratton Mountain School in the Simpson Center for Action Sports. Zeb spent a lot of time. Zeb, just wondering what some of your favorite memories are from school. Always killing it out on the hill, doing some skate lines that probably won't be done again, touching the ceiling off the super tramp, back flipping off the stage at graduation. <laughs> I know I have a lot. Have a great show, guys. Take care. God, let's give that man an air horn. Legend. Man, what a cool school that sounds like, man. So lucky to go there. So lucky. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, the second you said that, I remembered <clears throat> bouncing, or yeah, bouncing to, or like touching the ceiling. So it was like pretty much like a makeshift barn, like Woodward to Copper Barn. We had a super tramp, two um, like just normal like athletic tramps, and a foam pit. Um, yeah, so pretty much from like the second that got built, when it was like, I think it was 2014, yeah, we would train there 24-7. Like, that's where you'd be all the time. And, like, you know, being a kid, not getting to go off campus a lot, like, that's, like, the only place we wanted to be. So I just spent, like, we just spent, like, any time we could, any chance we got, we would go there and, like, love just, like, tr- jumping on the trampolines, like, just going crazy, like, having so much energy and stuff. It's not half as easy now. Or, like, like senior year, like, definitely did not jump as much or, like, was, like, more tiring, but, like, but I think back in the prime when I was like, like fourteen through sixteen or seventeen, like we did so much crazy stuff in there. Um, I think yeah, particularly though we touching the ceiling, like we got really good like with the tramps and stuff and like the pads and throwing. So <clears throat> I would just try to jump as high as possible and just have people double bounce me. We had like five people around the bed pretty much, and I go like bounce like one person would double bounce me. Go again, have another person double bounce me, and like then you're getting really high, like, <laughs> like to the point where like if you fuck up, you were <laughs> going off the trampoline. Like luckily there's padding, but like it's gonna suck. So we like, literally we have like the double bouncers, like like four people double bouncing me, and then like four people with like the crash pads to throw. And I remember one time like we have this little hole in like one of the pad sides, like where the springs are. So um, like that's kind of gnarly. I try to stay away from that. But one time I was trying to get there, like I bounced wrong a little bit and like floated over to the like that hole, like where the those springs are. And um, if I did not have a spotter there, I would have nutted. <laughs> I would have nutted those springs like from a like, thirty Ooh. foot tall sack. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that might have changed your life. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was so fucked. So um, life changing event. Yeah. Shouts out Henrik. <laughs> Shouts out Henrik. Um, he was the one who saved me that day. <laughs> Would they basically push you with a pad so you don't hit that spot? Well, they throw um, a pad under where you're about oh, to land. Oh, yeah. quickly throw a pad. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, doing a lot of training, like, we would, like, like for, like, any tricks we wanted to set, like, we'd have a person ready. Like, it'd be like, all right. Like, if you, like, feeling ready for a trick, it's like, all right. Like, so-and-so, get the pad. Like, we're trying this. We're trying like, this. You set it. And, like, your friends are ready. Like, just, like. Like you set it, and then like you're like, oh shit, he's gonna fall, and like you throw the pad, throw it quick. Some people, are, some people are bad at so like if like luckily he knew it was good, and um yeah, I almost died, but yeah, you gotta have the right spotter, huh? Yeah, Woo. you gotta have people who knows what know what's good. That's crazy. Now, uh, we get a lot of we got some Patreon questions and I personal questions about you. De- you definitely have some type of special air awareness uh, as far as being able to go off a jump and flip in any type of direction and come around back to your feet now do would you say that you attribute a lot of that to trampolines or natural talent or both both more natural but um definitely my spot time at um sms it wasn't even like i was trying to get better it was just so much fun like as a kid having so much energy and like like all the drama from the school and like um dealing with school in general and like just like all that stuff, like, 
it's like good to have a place to take it and like you know let it all go so um that's just where we'd be 24 7 like learning new flips um trying to learn triples like just anything crazy like doing like crazy games of tramp or skate into the pit and um yeah i think just doing that stuff just like learning crazy tricks and stuff on trampoline definitely helped my air awareness in general it's just natural i think but just like being able to act being able to exercise it at that place was definitely like huge i have a quick patreon question along these lines and uh first want to say thank you to all our patreon members give them an air horn yeah huge huge yeah. props you guys we couldn't do this without you this is from a good friend and Patreon member, Benny Pellegrino. How does wakeboarding help your snowboarding? How does wakeboarding help my snowboarding? I don't know. I think it's just good cross training in general. I'd say more, it's honestly like vice versa. I wouldn't say like wakeboarding really helps my snowboarding, but snowboarding most definitely helps my wakeboarding. Mm. Like, um, I don't know. I think if if I were to of like if I were to pursue like wakeboarding. I definitely could make it a lot like I don't know. I think it's just it, it's so much easier. Um, not like shit, like not like hating on any wakeboarders, but like, like it's like basically we do the same things that they do, but without a rope. So when you incorporate the rope, it's like, oh, like we know how to do the tricks. It's just like pretty much like learning how to deal with the rope. Mm-hmm. So once you learn to deal with the rope, it's like easy, <clears throat> like essentially. It's like. But that's the hardest part. It's like for any snowboarder, it's like learning how to navigate water and deal with the rope. It's like hard. But once you get comfortable with that stuff, it gets sick. Like, but it's like most, like, there's like a few crews who are kind of like pushing the game or inspired by snowboarding and skateboarding. But like most wake parks, like the boxes are like, like the rails, <laughs> the rails are like pretty much just boxes that are this big. So you can like, it's like for us, it's like if you learn how to deal with the rope, like what do you think you could do on a box with the rope? You know, it's mm-hmm. like use it as leverage and spin leverage, you know, how to spin. Like you got, we got like front threes on and stuff. So it's like all that stuff becomes like so easy. I used to do competitions when I was younger. Um, it was like, you know, like, you know, USASA, it's like the same thing, like points chase. Yeah, I would go to, um, my sister lived in like right outside of Atlanta or maybe in Atlanta at the time, but there's this. There's this um, park called Terminus, and I would go there and do comps. And then every time I go there, like, like I committed to doing one year of um, like actual competing. And yeah, I don't know. I was like winning almost everything, like without even like really riding that place a lot. Like I would go like probably like six times a year, plus competitions or something like that. They must have like, loved you there. <laughs> you came and just sweep the yeah, it was first place. Funny. <laughs> Show up six times. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? It was actually crazy. Um, like, I, I know not, I didn't really know like what was good with wakeboarding, like how to do this stuff. But I learned like kind of some crazy tricks. Like, and I guess they liked me so much, I made it into <laughs> a triple crown event. Like, like a monster. <laughs> got the tri- invite. I made it. I got like a wild card invite to a monster triple crown like <laughs> kicker event. Oh <Holy> shit! <laughs> like against like real pros and stuff. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Because <laughs> I was I was down to like, oh, that, I think the suckiest part about wakeboarding is like, just like the slams. <laughs> oh, dude, you just fly yeah. swatter. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that water gets hard, huh? Oh, that water gets hard. <laughs> Yeah, but like I don't know. I just generally like I can like just take slams and I don't mm-hmm. really care. So throwing my body, <laughs> I no. just was like down. <laughs> Hold on. Keep, I gotta pull up Dude, this one some uh, wakeboard those, slam. Some of those wakeboard crews are doing some wild stuff though. Yeah, a couple um, of them. Shouts out to Space Mob. Are those one of those dudes? Space that, Mob that do um, some crazy stuff. Yeah, they they're changing the game right now. Those guys are so sick. They find actually, like urban features almost on yeah. bridges and yeah, um, um, yeah. Space is my favorite right now. I'm gonna have to look that they, up. They're crazy. Like that. That shit's crazy. Like <laughs> uh, Tommy Gesby sends me this video. Tommy sent a couple it to you. a couple times uh, like a year. <laughs> but watch this fly swatter. We'll put it on the screen for the people watching. <laughs> Dude, I think, oh, John Shirley. Yeah, I know him. <laughs> was that on purpose? You're trying to figure out yeah, if that's on that's purpose. Yeah, that's on purpose. Like, well, like, this I is think on purpose? sometimes, like, 
You know, <laughs> well, maybe not. Watch this. I watch, th- watch this. I, maybe not. <laughs> that's like <laughs> that's like the controversy with my stuff. It's like I don't know if it's on purpose, but that one looked like it's on purpose. They Dude, do if it was aggressive respect. edge catch, yeah, if, they, you, if you're doing like that's the week where I want to see the full commit uh, board slide the water to edge catch on purpose. <laughs> they on do purpose. that stuff, dude. I <laughs> they I was they like, do that stuff. I did that once, like um, so like on like full cables. It's like a it's like a hexagon. So like you go around the turn like this. And through that turn, you can either take it inside or outside. And, like, people who don't know, like, they, like, kind of, like, just chill through it. But it's, like, you lose slack, and then it gains again. Oh, shit. So you get yanked. And one time, I don't know what I was Oh, right. Like, so, I think probably after that clip, like, if you edge in really hard, like, mm-hmm. you can, like, like shoot up out of the water. Yeah. Oh, wow. And um, so um, I was, like, I thought you did it on the outside corner. So, like, pretty much if you go... Like, pretty much you're going to get yanked through it a little bit, so you got to pull down. Mm-hmm. Also, for people who don't know, like, you, if you, like, dig in and edge, like, you go a lot faster. So I took it all the way outside, just going as, like, hard as I can. And, um, yeah, just, like, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> That's Fly swatter <laughs> score. Like, so, whip my head so hard, like, you come up and, like, it's like, oh, no. like, <laughs> like, you know, it's like, whoa. Like, I think. I I think my head is like concussion proof or like I I got some extra whatever in there because like I was fine but I was like holy <laughs> shit like that was insane <laughs> like I got out and I was like yep I'm fine but that was fucked up <laughs> like and then I got over to the doc and they're like holy shit are you okay like <laughs> that's but the quote was, of the day my head is concussion proof. <laughs> <laughs> Knock on wood, because I don't want, dude. There's been I've, but on a one wake <laughs> wake skating incident, I fucking scorpion dude, made some yeah. dubstep sounds in my head. I think it's because yeah, yeah. The <laughs> I was that's literally what it sounded like. It sounds like dubstep. <laughs> okay, let's talk about liquid death, buds. Let's talk about it. So uh, basically. If you're been at Seven Eleven, anything like that, you're in the water section. You're gonna say, "Why are these cans of beer in here?" Tall boys too at that, but they're not cans of beer. They're uh, mountain spring water, and it's liquid death, and it's water from a can. So it uh, feels like you're hammering a brewski, but you're actually just getting hydrated. It's a good feeling. It's a great feeling, and um, other than that, yeah, that they're uh, also not contributing to all the plastic going to the ocean. Because fuck, fuck plastic. Yeah, Respect fuck that. the plastic. Murder your thirst. Okay. And death of the plastic. So basically what's going on here is we have the uh, liquid death spinning wheel of death. Now, Zeb, you spin this, and there's a multitude of things that we can do here. Um, we're not going to do foot race because we already did that. Foot race is off the table. But anything uh, else? What if I go backwards? What does that mean? He'll run backwards. Oh, we can do a backwards foot race, sure. Against you going normal. I like that. Yeah, spin it. See, see what happens. Give it a good spin because it needs, like, you want it to rotate hard. You don't want him to beat you going backwards. You go normal. Well, if he does, you can make fun of me for the rest of my life. Here we go. Foot race, foot race. What's it say? <laughs> what did it land on? <laughs> sniffing salts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we doing sniffing salts? Yeah, so uh, here's the bomb hole. We're big oh, fans of, of sports and sniffing salts. Uh <laughs> I took some of these. I noticed that a lot of the hockey players use them, so I started using sniffing salts uh, before strenuous activity. <laughs> and um, basically, Zeb is going to have to do his first sniffing salt. That so was like for, foreshadowing. You doing them earlier. He's like, I don't need any. I'm not going to do any of those. And then he gets it. <laughs> there's, there's no illegal drugs here. It's, literally yeah. just, it's just ammonia salt. It wakes you up, wakes up your sinuses. So what you do is you squeeze it. It'll turn red and then give it a big whiff. Here we go, Zeb. Wait. So squeeze the middle of it, and then where do I whip it? It turns red. Did it and turn red? Just, Did yeah, it pop? You just smell it. Wait, for <laughs> some, you'll feel it pop. There it goes. And now you just smell it. Oh, that was a big smell. Oh, that was. Whoa! You don't need to sniff it that hard, man. Oh, you just need a little whip. <laughs> Are you hearing dubstep in your brain now? <laughs> Yo, oh you hit the, the salt hard, okay? dog. You all good? His eyes are watering for those who can't see. So, uh, 
<laughs> I get the idea whenever he does anything, he does it big, dude. <laughs> I'll get I'll get it. I'll hit a little low with you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, I just got Whoa. hit by a bug. <laughs> dude. He's still juicing. How are the potatoes, Evan? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You all right, dude? His, his capillaries <laughs> exploded. <laughs> I can't stop crying. <laughs> oh. Oh. Mm. My. Whoa. Okay. That is... We- do you want to run through a wall? Dude, he, he, he was <laughs> still crying. He didn't do like a, you know, light, like, yeah. dabble. It I, was, was a full... I was just about to say, like, you don't got to go crazy. You should have said, said that. You should have said that. Oh, my God. I hope everything's just, okay. You oh. have to shake a gentle whiff. Whoa. <laughs> Whew, okay. Are you okay? I'm still fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> He's still crying. Dude. <laughs> that was in. That was. That was messed up. <laughs> He's still crying. <laughs> Oh man, I've never oh seen a whiff. Oh my god, I've never, I've never seen a whiff anything that Dude, hard. Me either, and I've been to some serious right? sniffing events. You need to go to the hospital? Yeah, we, did your capillaries oh. explode? I'm so crying. <laughs> <laughs> we may need to take a quick break here. <laughs> Let him recover. Uh, next time we'll have a Whew. little disclaimer. Okay, yeah, a little disclaimer. Do not need to go that aggressive. You just need a little Holy riff. Holy shit. Did you see his face when he was sniffing out serious and. <laughs> What a huge whiff he took. <laughs> yeah, for the listeners <laughs> that didn't get to see that, you might want to go to YouTube don't and pull this video. Don't sniff it that up. hard. For listeners, don't <laughs> sniff it that hard. Don't do that. Don't also, do that. he may run a 4-1 right now, yeah, potentially, if we do a 40-yard dash. <laughs> <laughs> I could see you taking oh. out uh, DK Metcalf and uh, Cheetah. I'm still fucked up. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, dude. My Let's, nose is dying. Should we take a little break here? Let's get up. Let's take a little break. Hey, we're back. Uh, we had to take a little break there. We were concerned we might have to bring Zeb to the hospital. Uh, he was checking his ears. So, again, uh, maybe don't recommend going that hard. Yeah, you don't. It's a light sniff. It's you a light could, sniff. Yeah, definitely should have told me that. Yeah, that, that's our fault. That is our fault. Yeah, uh, but, um, yeah, you should definitely rip one like that now. Okay. You uh, see what's good. Well, I... Zeb, out of out of uh, respect for Zeb, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna rip a uh, sniffing salt aggressively. <laughs> Maybe I'm just a bitch. I don't know. No, no. Well, the first time you do it, it zings you. I, I, okay. I'm kind of become a little bit. That is true. The first time, it, it hits I you become harder. a regular. So here we go. Okay. Ha. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> exactly. <laughs> oh no! Oh dude. my God! <laughs> oh! Whew. All right, it's turning red, but other than that, he's uh oh, <laughs> eyes are lightly watering. Oh, we got okay, little, lightly watering eyes. <laughs> Whew. Okay, I feel like I want to retry the forty yard dash right now. Get you guys I'm thinking I'm getting there. a four three. <laughs> I think I can run a four three right now. So four I three. think it does uh, the first time. Played in the fact. Yeah, also, that, mine was really close to my nose. Yeah, you put it. He put he it like right, put right up in his into nose. his nostrils. Yeah. That's not. Maybe we'll do a YouTube tutorial once we make our bomb hole sniffing salts yeah. of how to <laughs> how to sniff how to salts. properly do a sniffing salt. Yeah, um, we don't need any casualties out there. No, and it's more. It, there's also a degree of showmanship to do with it. You yeah. kind of you want it to uh, kind of have the desired effect. Maybe intimidate your opponent. Mm-hmm. You know, you're gonna want to intimidate your opponent. I don't think that would have intimidated my opponent. <laughs> no. oh. I, I attempted it. <laughs> no, my opponent. <laughs> yeah. I don't think. <laughs> you should know what? I should have. Oh, you know are you okay? I should have given him the sniffing sauce before the race. I would have done I would have done better. Yeah. Yeah, I he would not. I think I could have pulled through for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I would have been fucked up, but I would have been like. He's on some no excuses shit. Yeah, Play like a champion. He'd handle it. So uh, one thing I kind of remembered, just I actually forgot about, but I used to put on a contest called Holiday Hammers at Watch Use It. And you won that shit when you were in like seventh grade. Do you remember that? Yeah, that was the first. That was the first real competition I think I won. Like that's the first money I won. I think. No way. I think something like that. Yeah. Look at that. Fast forward all these years later, we're sitting in my garage. <laughs> that's the first cash. Record. I think I was one of the first pros I saw too. I was like, oh shit, yo, this, this, this competition, holy shit! Did you ask him to shoot a selfie with you? 
I don't think I did. Mm. But I was randomly going well, through like my phone. Photo. Yeah, he. I was going through my phone. He he fucking mopped everybody up. So Cheddar Biscuit talk. How much you win? Shit, my brain. A couple is hundred just dollars. A piece of shit. One thousand. A thousand. A, a grand. Chris I delivered a thousand dollars. I think. I think it was a grand. Forty-seven fifty. That's great. great I think money. there's a picture somewhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of you in the check. I got oversized checks. You made, made right? oversized yeah. checks. Yep. I wonder if I. Mm-hmm. Where does one go to get an oversized check? Yeah, what you do is you design it in Adobe Photoshop with a shitty skill set that I have, and then you send it to, like, a Kinko's, and they oh. can just print it on, like, and a... can you actually cash the check? Board. Oh, you don't have to ask Zeb- Zebel on that. Did you try to go to cash that check? No, I think there was paperwork mm. for it. All right. Yeah, there was paperwork. I wonder if anyone's ever tried. Buds, you look like you want to hit a Patreon. No, nah, I'm just checking. checking okay, notes. well, in that case... I'm I got... down, though. I'm down to hit a page. You know what's another thing we got to talk about? This is... Because we don't give a shit about uh, chronological order nope. at all. We go where we need to go. <laughs> uh, but let's talk about the 203 Nitro Swallowtail, a.k.a. Mm. Big Pink. This is another break the internet moment. Yeah, Big Pink broke the net. What what happens when you... It almost seems like when you get on Big Pink, you get possessed by the devil. <laughs> I fucking love that board. <laughs> love that board. I think that was the hardest thing to leave. A nitro. Like, was lose, lose, losing, losing big, big pink? pink? <laughs> he sounds like a guy that broke up I, with his girlfriend. I, I, like a long lost the, love right now. Actually, though, moment. like, like, fucking Canute, you're sick. I love you. Love you. Like, air horn for him. Should we give him the super air horn? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he gives me he gives me so much love still. Like, I love him so much. So he's so the sick. nitro team manager for those <coughs> who are unfamiliar with Yes. That. Um... Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. And honestly, I didn't. I don't think. I think I'd asked for that word a lot before, just like because I can't travel with it. So whenever I'm in a place where I want it, I like have I'd have to ask him. Well, I don't even think I was wanting that board that summer, or like last summer. But he was like, "Yo, like I can send a big pink out if you want." I'm like, yeah, "Sure, why not?" <laughs> and then I like literally that was a that's definitely a staple to my career now. And um, yeah. Had no idea that was going to happen. Another thing about Big Pink, it doesn't fit in a board bag. Yeah, that's what, it I, was gonna, yeah, that's I, was what I mean. Say, so you can't it, fly with it. It doesn't thing. fit in a board bag, so I literally, like, <laughs> everyone, everyone's like, oh, do you have it with you? I'm like, no, that one's in Utah. That one's in, uh, my friend oh, has Oh, there's that. multiple locations. <laughs> I literally, around. like, I have, like, yeah, I have a Big Pink in Vermont. I have a Big Pink in North Carolina. I have one in, um, actually, I gave one to my homie Evan Pierce. Oh, I gave. I, I got to get that one back. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's like a stable to my career now. But um, Evan Pierce, I gave it to him after the summer because I couldn't travel with it. And then I have one here too. I guess I could grab that from my homie's house. <laughs> um, and um, for the people that are unfamiliar, we'll have a link in the show notes yeah. if you're listening. And if you're watching, we'll have uh, the big pink edit from your YouTube channel of you just doing your land and switch, your land and regular. I think you did what front ten on it, uh, switch back nine. Back dub ten. Back dub ten. Yeah, all the and also rail moves, rail which moves. is actually almost more impressive on a two hundred three. Uh, the ping factor, like the 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 factor of like hitting your nose on the way up on a stiff two hundred three swallowtail, is uh, second to none. I don't know if second there's a, to none, and it's built for powder. This guy's in the slush and on the rails. <laughs> Burton needs to make you a big yeah, they pink. Need to make you a big pink. Let's get on that, please. <clears throat> I keep forgetting to ask. I love it so much and like want another one, but I keep like not. You know what asking. they should do? I'm gonna Burton. This is a free one for me. Normally, I'll send you an invoice. You guys should make a blue one. I have a surfboard, a giant surfboard called the Blue Bomber. Mm. I think you should make a one or a two o five swallowtail called the Blue Bomber. Even bigger than Big Pink. Yeah, maybe see if you know, see if you can go bigger. What do you think about that? I kind of want to like. I want to do like you know, um, Robin Big Big Black. Yep. That'd be sick to do like a logo like that, big black. And mm-hmm. Maybe have like a black flower fist on it. Oh, that, there it is. <laughs> That'd Dude. be sick. There Guys, it. he's thought this through. They got to put signature, this shit. Signature one. <laughs> yeah. Or make like five of them. What size on that? I guess two or five works. Yeah, two and then make a two, 210 board bag so you can bring yeah. the shit with you. You could just cut your board bag ends off and stitch more on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Get a little. Uh, true. Yeah. yeah. Um, even when I, when I was like flow, when I was like 14. I think that's when I got on Nitro. I was like flow and like you know, when you're like flow, it's like your communication with like whoever you're talking to is like kind of butchered. It's like you know, or like if you're talking to a TM, they're like not paying that much attention to you. No, bottom of the barrel. Yeah, bottom of the barrel. 
So like, it's like I get an email from Canute every once in a while, like, yo, I gotta go, I like a divorce, like, you know, yeah, like, yeah, like, okay, that's the chance I'm gonna ask again, like, like, I'd be like yeah, like, can I get, like, one of these boards or, like, something like that, and then, like, also, like, I know I don't need it, but, like, can I get, like, Big Pink, too, and, like, never got a response, to the, like, I'd get the boards and stuff, but I never got, like, a Big Pink, like, I just wanted that board so bad, because I, like, would see Brian Fox and Austin Smith rip it. And, um, yeah, I could, never got it. But finally, um, I went out on a trip to Europe. It was a demo. Like, there, it was, like, a oh, night trip. And they were doing, like, demos at Kidston or anything. And I finally got to ride one and, like, feel it. And I loved it. And, um, yeah, I think I just love it because it matches my power. Or, like, just generally. And I, like, love the feeling of it, like, riding it. <clears throat> it, like, feels like my board. I would say if anybody... For a layman person thinking about trying to switch back lip on a 203 that's set all the way back so you have, like, three times as much tail as nose when you're doing a switch back lip <clears throat> and your nose is a swallowtail going the wrong way, I would say there's a 95% chance of pinging and back tacoing, like where you go up and hit your heel edge and back taco for an average person trying that. That's I think I learned to switch back lip on that board, too. <laughs> 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 or I, like, truly started trying them on that board. Yeah. Why'd you set it up backwards? I didn't. Oh, he was going switch. Oh, switch. He's talking about okay. switch back lip. Oh, the way you tail. that, gotcha. Well, because he's, he's it's, it's swallow tail would be four. It's one well, way. Because one you're doing shot, a you're doing trick. a switch method too, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Another, I got another uh, guest question here, which is presented by Solomon. And uh, this one is from none other than Uncle Russ, a.k.a. Russell hey. Winfield. Here we go. What's going on, bomb hole? Uncle Russ here. Grandy's Stoney. Zab, how y'all doing? How y'all chopping it up in there? I got a question for you, though, Zeb. Something that uh, I've been wondering. Is uh, this snowboarding and skating and all this other stuff you do, is it easy for you, man? Like, are you just the FT king? Like, what to do? Like, acquiring minds, we want to know. I'll let your boy go. I'll, uh, shout out to him. It's a good question. Legend. Great question. I wouldn't say it's easy. Um, I think I just like I'm just generally coordinated, I guess, in that sense. And I'm not I'm just not scared to fall and know how to fall. <clears throat> so all those factors just like kind of add up and don't make it easy, but if they make it easier, like it's still hard for me. Like some tricks, I, like I don't have or like you know I gotta learn, but I'm like just down to like you know take the hits. Skating was my first love. Um, I did that before I snowboarded. And I think, actually, I think I would have pursued skating if it wasn't, if my skate park didn't shut down. But, yeah, I, I skated before I snowboarded, so, like, I've always had that skill. And then, like, I kind of fine-tuned it when I got to SMS, or, like, Stratton Mountain School, because they had a skate park. One thing I was curious about, uh, going back to High Cascade era, uh, when you were a camper, when you were a kid, I would see you come up there, and they have this thing called the Huckleberry Skate Jam at the end, where it's basically like a skate contest, and you decided to skate it barefoot one year, and did like a fly out to the, just huge, and won the whole thing barefoot. Uh, what's the, what's going on with the barefoot skating? At home, our skate park is right next to a creek. So during the summer we'd be skating and I just get hot and I'd go like chill in the creek. You know, like when when like when you get out of water, how your feet are kind of like clammy and it's hard to put socks on. Yes. And it's hot out too, so like I just wouldn't want to put socks on again. And then I just like you know bail on my shoes too. And um, my skate park was pretty flowy, so and also it was like hot and like you know just kind of having like the the wind at your feet and stuff. I loved that feeling, so I just would just like kind of start. Dropping in and skating my park barefoot <clears throat> and had this little gap to Ollie. Like, so I got started to realize I could, like, you know, oh shit, you, you can do this. And, um, yeah, that's kind of where it came from in the in the midst of it all at like that skate at that skate jam. It's like, oh, fuck it. Oh, I, I can't really do much more. So I'll just take my shoes off and try shit. And then people started to really drive with it. So it kind of became a thing every year. That just reminded me of something you told me that was completely fascinating. Uh, we were talking about snowboard boots, right? And I've had a bunch of ankle problems, focus my ankle skating. So personally, I prefer a stiffer boot. <clears throat> um, and I was asking you about the stiffness of your boot. 
and you read a very soft boot in the 32 line. And explain the reason why you read soft boots. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I, th- I don't think it's what I set out to do. It just kind of generally started happening. I don't think I like my, f- like, if my shins down. I don't think I like that, like, conf- like constricted in the first place. I think I started to, like, realize I, s- I kind of skate when I saw a word. <clears throat> or, like, that's kind of where I get my power or, like, that's kind of how I, like, um, I control my landings or um, takeoffs and such with my ankles. I use my ankles a lot in snowboarding. Pretty much, I don't tighten my inner lining. You can straight up, like, if, like, you're me, you'll probably cut them out. Or, like, I've cut a few of my, like, Velcro inner linings out. And, um, yeah, then I, like, like, tighten them, like, you know, generally, like, the outside laces, but, like, not that tight. Like, I don't, like, like yank on them. I just kind of tighten them. To give you a reference of, like, what I mean by that is like there's some ty- there's some days I like look down and like see my like pants are, like kind of bulged out a little bit, <clears throat> and I won't think much of it. But then I like get off the mountain and pull them up, and the laces are just like popped out, and, like not even in. Your boots are untied. Yeah, just pretty, like your yeah, shoes boots are untied. I guess yeah. I just have strong ankles and like I don't know. I, I like to navigate with my ankles too. Like not just my. I don't like lean on my shins or like I don't rely on the boot to be stiff for me to turn. Like also. Like, you know, when you're, like, on your toe edge and it's, like, kind of firm and, like, kind of rough and you don't know if you're going to, like, be able to hold it fully? Yes. And then, like, you can, like, bump and slip out? Yes. Like, I'll do, I'll be doing that sometimes, bump, slip out, but, like, I can almost, like, catch it with my edge again. And, like, it's, like, a second, it's, like, a secondary, like, I don't know. You got more board feel, more articulation. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. It's, like, um like kind of like a lash, lash resort catch, like, like, like a bump and, like, be able to like still catch it and like keep going, like power through it again. Now I have a question for you because the problem with for me with soft boots is you take a specific trick, so like take a front seven or a back five or a trick where you land on your toes, right? Like uh, if you under rotate a little bit and land on your toes, do you know what I'm talking about? Like how with the way you come around on a back five, if you're under rotating, you really can like put a lot of pressure on your ankles and your toes. Does that ever get affected? From having the softer boots when you land, or are you just able to manhandle that shit? I don't, I don't notice. I don't think. Okay, because that's where um, I've had ankle injuries. Is that those tricks actually specifically landing at recharge? I guess this happens generally, and I don't care. And that's what I'm about to explain. But um, at recharge, like you know the table at the bottom. Yeah, I like tried to like kind of hand drag back on it, mm-hmm. and came up so short. And um. I was like kind of high too, and my like angles just came down, and, like smacked the ground, and, like mm-hmm. my edge went in. Like I think I did the thing you're talking about. And it's kind of like ow, mm-hmm. but um, I don't know. I just kind of kept going, and it like definitely like the next day I could feel it, and like I think I stopped feeling it like three or four days ago. Just kind of take the hits, go with it. There's actually one. I think there's only one time that it really fucked me up, which was um at Utah actually out here. I was at a rev tour, and, like, this is, like, one of those jumps, like, with the steep landings because it's so big yep. and stuff. For those of you who don't know, if, like, you back, like, sometimes when you backflip, like, you go bigger somehow. So I backflipped, and, like, I knew I had to throw it slow in the first place because it was a big jump. But, like, I, like, threw it slow and, like, looked around, and it was still, like, going down, like, passing the knuckle. And, like, all the weight came down and, like, just rocked my ankle. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like, you did, like, the edge thing where you yep. land on toe edge and, like, you so like what, G out kind of you like G out, but like you like ride out still mm-hmm. like, just like kind of corrects itself. I like basically did that. But like, so I basically like rolled slash crunch my ankle like that. Like, you know, really lucky to have good ankles, mm-hmm. like ankle control. Oh, well, hey, we've been cruising for a while, buds. Let's do it. Uh, let's pay the bill with a quick uh, mm-hmm. pump beer. Let me do say? this. Let's get into our breakout moment presented by our friends over at 10 barrel and pub beer. Pub Beer supports us. You should support them. Their tagline is cheap, fun beer. Now, do you have a moment in your career coming up that is a breakout moment? I feel like I have a breakout moment and a breakout year. Let's talk so, about it. Yeah, let's talk about them both. There was a small, the small breakout moment was that year event, probably. Holiday Hammers. Yeah. That's awesome. Now I'm thinking that's, about it. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> that's like when I was like on it. Like kind of like a lot of people holding it down too there, I feel like. And like I was just riding really good that day. And then I think my real one was at High Cascade, like the MMP. 
Oh my God! What's yeah, MMP? Meryl Mini Pipe in uh. Invitational. The McTwist. We got to insert this clip. The McTwist to back lip to back three in. <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah, yeah. And it's funny too because um, I wasn't even invited really yet, or like it was like I think twenty minutes twenty minutes before the event or something. Like I was just cruising. Pops it was talking to Bodie about like who should be in, and I just happened to be passing by. He's like, "Oh, you should definitely put this guy in." He's like, yeah, sure, like, yeah, put him in. It's actually funny. I was there with Will Healy that year, and he was at the top. He's like, all right, what should you do next? I'm like, huh? I think I want to do like Crippler first hit, McTwist second hit. He's like, you should do McTwist first hit, Crippler second hit, because if you McTwist second hit, you're probably gonna hit <laughs> the rainbow. And I was like, nah, I'm still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> this clip's unreal. I'm like, nah, I'm still doing it. And then, um, yeah, that happened. That was that actually made it into Susie Greenberg 270, the movie, I believe, correct? Yeah, I think it's around the credits. Mm -hmm. They're like very end, very, very end. Yes, it basically goes up and lands in back lip. On, I, I said mailbox, I meant rainbow box. On a rainbow box. Yeah. And then 360s in. Whew. Unreal. Then what? how did you end up doing in that contest? I feel like you got best bail. I've actually won that one before. It's on the wall over there. Uh, yeah, I knocked myself out one year. I think yeah, I think I just got best bail. You got best bail as well, or you won the contest? No, a different year, but I uh, got one in one of the years. But yeah, that's fine. I think also like I don't know the name of this thing, but I don't know. I've, maybe you put a candle in it. Like that was my um trophy, and it had like one of the crab grab like um, poop tractions. Okay, and um yeah, no one. I think that's when they weren't a thing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, "Oh, I got to keep this." So I still have that in my room. Like, that's like I think that's like one of my top, um, one of my top trophies. That's, that's cool. shout out to Preston <laughs> from Grab Grab for making those. Yeah, such cool <laughs> trophies, dude. We got to talk about the fact that you've worn that red Crab Grab thirty two shirt for what three years running. What's going on? Are you on some MJ shit with the um, lucky jersey or what? When did we When did we do that shoot last? When was the shoot? The thirty two shoot. Thirty two shoot. That was like, uh, dude. That was before COVID. Yeah. So that was a year, yeah, a, a year and six months or yeah. eight months. Or yeah, nine something months. like yeah. that. Well, it was like everyone was looking around and finding like dope stuff and like stuff their size. And I was like, dang, I can't find anything. And then like luckily I found this shirt finally, like the Crab Grab shirt. And I'm like, oh, I fucking love Crab Grab and 32, like so I can like rock this heavy. And I love red. I was like, I've just been on a red kick lately. Like I don't like pick out red stuff, but red stuff comes to me. Hence the red um, NASCAR jersey. Yeah, that signature line with 32. Yeah, the black and red. You've been rocking that hard. Yeah, and then my friend got me these red pants that I run a lot. Um, and then, yeah, just red just is kind of my thing right now. Steady for the last like year and a half now. And um, it's got holes in it. It's <laughs> Hopefully it keeps going, but it's on its way out. Just rocking it. Should, yeah, gonna, I got a Patreon question along the lines of what we're talking about from Darth Blazed. Darth Blazed. Darth Blazed. <laughs> What's up with the NASCAR inspired signature gear you got dropping? As someone who grew up racing quarter midgets, I guess those are race cars. Um, height. Just curious what your fandom slash connection to racing is and some of your favorite drivers, if you have any. And um, then he says, Thank you so much. And he's hyped to see your show. You're welcome. And um Yeah, there's really there's not much to it. I'm from the south, so we have a lot of racing down there, of course. I've actually never been to a NASCAR race. I actually was just thrifting one day. I was just chilling with my friend. Like, he was trying to film a skate park for me. Like, I would literally, like, not want to do anything. He'd be like, come on, let's go skate or go do something. And, like, that day, he was like, come on, let's go do something. And I'm like, I, like, I, I do not feel any. He's like, let's at least go thrifting within, like, five minutes of us being there. Like, maybe even, like, two. I found this red NASCAR jacket. That, like perfectly fit me and it was sick and like perfect condition. And I was like, yo, check this out. He's like, yo, that's sick. And like even this old lady behind me was like, that's sick. <laughs> <laughs> so I was that's like, when you know uh, it's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, and also, yeah, just added my red theme. <laughs> like I was like, okay. So then I started running it like snowboarding and like it worked. It's a good so, kit. And then Brian Cook, um, our TM for 32 hit me up and he was like, yo, let's like, Let's do a... Let's do Give him an air horn real yeah. quick. Yeah. Shouts out, Brian. The best. Hooking us up for sure. And I'm like, or like, what do you want to do for your line? I was just like, damn, I don't know what to do. And then like, I think I turned around or maybe I had the jacket on. I was like, yo, 
this. Like, mm -hmm. let's remake this. Pretty much, it's all inspired by that jacket my whole line this year. You got 32 signature series with pants, jacket, gloves. It's jacket, gloves. Got shirt, some shirts, too. Yep. Boots, too. Shirts yeah, and, and boots. boots. The whole nine, yeah, everything. Yeah, check those out. You can probably get it all 32.com. Is it available yet? Comes um, out this Maybe winter, in the fall. fall. Probably in the fall. fall. I think in the fall. I think the shirts are coming out this summer. It might. This stuff might even drop. I think it might drop this summer. I think. Okay. I don't know. I think it's getting a lot of love, so he, yeah. he might like switch it up and like drop it earlier. Shout out to 32 for yeah. supporting yourself, a lot of riders, and letting a lot of these guys, like myself included, uh, design outerwear yeah. and have input with the team. And yeah, so we have a, such a solid crew, man. I feel like I'm, I'm so stoked to have you on the squad. I know yeah. are, you seem like you're hyped on the squad. I love the squad. It's like it's definitely like the closest squad I've been with. Like, And it's the first squad I've been with, too, like snowboarding. Yeah, I think the like, spot check we did, like that's like the first real – trip i went on the brighton spot check mm -hmm. that's, that's the first real trip i went on and it's like felt like family ever since brian treats us really good so well i think uh it's time for a little mm -hmm. name that <laughs> okay give me a confidence level here zero <laughs> <laughs> love it I love a good zero. Yeah, good zero. zero. Dude. He said to me know. even at Mammoth, he's like, I am not going to get in that video part. Is there already if, if I do, that holy shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like them. I don't take I don't take the time to like sit back and watch the old shit and like the dope shit. I never dive into it. I need to. Would you say it's kind of like St um, Owen Wilson's character in um, Zoolander where he's like, Sting somebody I look up to. Uh, do I listen to his music? No. <laughs> but do I admire the fact that he's making it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I know all about these parts and like or like the writers and stuff, but I like like haven't seen the parts, so like I can't like recall some stuff. Well, let's but see how you do. Yeah, let's see Here how it go. goes. Oh. Yeah. Well, this is from our new movie. <laughs> He's in the movie. <laughs> yeah. That's that. That's, that's you, Tony. Jordan. Okay, so he knows. Woo! He gave me such little confidence in his ability. That you went there. That I was thinking that. So, oh, first of all, before I get forget, I thought maybe you're just gonna give him one of his I own fucking, songs. That, that's from the 32 video team, and uh, look it up on the internet. Yeah, uh, it's on YouTube. Sick. And uh, you just won a bomb hole cooler that's got a bomb diesel. hole mug. I think you got some sweat shorts in there. I love uh, sweat shorts. What else is in there? Stickers, Stony Buds air Probably freshener. A mug. All of this stuff available at bombhole.com. If you want to support the podcast, great way to do it is buy some merch. Head on over to bombhole.com. We got all kinds of goods there. So you got, yeah, that's that's from, uh, I think that's the Finland section. And then that's Ender. Ender, right? No, not No, Ender. it's not the Ender. <clears throat> yeah, I have never heard that song too. So I was like, oh, this song's sick when I saw it. So. You got the name that video part right? It did. With a 0% confidence zero level. to a win. I was going to say it's kind of would be embarrassing. You were talking about how much you love 32 and then <laughs> you do the 32 video. And you're loses like, out on it. <laughs> Never heard this song in my life. But you got it. Uh, part two, name that video part. This is for the listeners. Uh, you guys know the drill. If you know the song, comment on Zeb's photo when it's in the, on Instagram when his episode first drops. It's the first photo of Zeb, um, if you know it. So here we go. And you get a chance for what, buds? Sticker pack. Hey, let's hit it. Yeah, that's a uh, iconic one from people from yeah. our generation. Um, but yeah, here we go. Thank you for playing. Okay, we haven't talked about it, but a uh, huge, huge moment. Another break the internet, break the TV moment, break everything moment. Uh, knuckle huck. Uh, first, I, I got to preface this by saying um, thank you. I was with Frank April in Quebec, and uh, Knuckle Huck was on, and he said, oh, I think uh, Marcus Cleveland's going to win, which I think a lot of people th thought. It's kind of his event. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I think Zeb's got it. And he's like, oh, yeah. And we ended up betting. I bet $50 on you. Nice. And you won me 50 bucks, dog. Yeah. So, yeah, let's talk about that experience. How was it? That was crazy and i went went into it with no boots um 
exploded my binding the first night. Didn't get to ride the next two or three days. Had a dub I needed to try, slash wanted to try. Um, did not go down. That's the think the dub that got me there, like with my like viral clip. Yeah. I did not do so that that's from Mount Snow, the back one butter cab double underflip. Correct. Yeah. They, you never really landed. Never landed. So yeah, I was trying to do that and it just was not working. I don't know. Not in the right mindset. I don't know. I was just tripping. I don't do big competitions. I've never done anything like that. So like to be there, like and I don't really compete with these guys either, so I don't know a lot of them, like, comfortably. Pretty much I get there, and I was, like, crazy. Dropped in for the first, like, practice run. Like, yeah, I went over the knuckle. I was like, oh, that's kind of sick. I think I went over it again. And went over it a third time, and, yeah, it just, like, exploded my binding and board. And, like, <laughs> I had just got new boots, too, I think. You're riding brand new boots out the box, right? Yeah, fresh out the box. <laughs> <laughs> I threw mine away in Detroit and like had all like the stress of like you know being in a new place it was like being in a new school almost I guess and um yeah so that all sucked everything leading up to it pretty much like was not that sick um yeah what happened contest think- starts and you <laughs> snapped dude that's what happened yeah I don't know, it was just weird like being around them like like everyone up there they were like it was like Marcus and um it was like Marcus and Fridge, and like they, I think they had coaches up there, and like they're speaking different languages, and like being all serious. And I was like, "This is not me at all. Like, what's going on?" Like, <laughs> see Marcus drop into the dub tin. I'm like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> 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 like in the zone, like just like whoa. <laughs> and um, yeah. So I was just kind of tripping the whole week. Didn't have shades, and I was like, "Damn!" Like. I like, wish I had, like, shades to kind of lighten my mood, like, go back to kind of normal. Just, like, doing, like, funny shades, you know. Just, like, kind of take the edge off, like, not, like, you know, like, have fun. And then these shit, like, these heart-shaped glasses, like, just, I look, look down and they're at my feet, like, as I'm saying that, pretty much, like, walking up alone to the to the venue. I was wondering where those came from. <laughs> yeah, straight up just, like, look down and they were at my feet. So I was like, let's wear these. Wow. Yeah, then I went up there, dropped in, and, like, for the practice run, and I don't know, I was feeling comfortable. Yeah, then I dropped in for my real run. So, like, I kept, like, dropping and seeing my name not move, like, at all. Like, every time I went up, or, like, I got, like, drop, get on the snowmobile, go back up to the top, and, like, look at the board, and, like, my name hadn't moved at all, and I was like, whoa. And then it just kept not moving, and I'm like, oh, whoa, this is, like, actually happening. Like, I don't think I thought I was going to win at all. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, eh, I guess I'll just do this. Like, I guess I was, because I was expecting to do that double, and I was like, and, like, it just wasn't happening. But actually, I think because I couldn't do that, I, like, that, like, makes me, like, kind of innovate and think of different tricks. It made me, like, remember tricks that I had done before and, like, bring them back out. Like, that back, like, the rodeo hand drag thing, like, I hadn't done that in, like, three or four years. <laughs> but I was like, the night of, I was like, oh, yeah, that trick. And then the method, I think I did that the night of Coffin too. method? Yeah. yeah. How the hell did you yeah, come up was, with that? That was Sorry cool. Interrupt you. So I started with the coffin, like, the year before, and that was fun. And then I was like, oh, I guess I can go, like, front three with it. So I'll do, like, coffin with, like, front three, like, indie or melon. And um, everyone wanted me to do a coffin backflip. And I don't know. Like, I was like, because I got on, tramp- on the trampolines also, like, when we, um, like, being kids, like, we would, like, do, like, kabooms, which is, like, you bounce off your back and do a backflip. So it's, like, kaboom, like, do a coffin backflip. Like, and I'm, like, I don't know how the fuck I would do that. Like, I don't even know how to approach that. And then, like, yeah, that night came up, and um, I just did it with, I was, like, oh, I'll do it with method. Like, that'll be sick. And I think just the way, like, if you, like, do the coffin, do the coffin, and um, I think just doing the method, it sets you into a flip instead of, like, a quirk. Just naturally. So I wasn't trying to do a backflip. It just happened. And oh, yeah. So you were thinking front three, kind of? I was like, coffin front three, but with but the you method. you grab method and it made you flip. And it flips you. Such a cool looking That's gear. how that happened. This upside down method, perfect style. Yeah, perfect, perfect style. That, was, that trick felt so good. <laughs> You've done it again since? No. <laughs> wow, so crazy how you guys One do and that. done? I mean, I'd do it again. I just, I don't know. One and done, though, right? You haven't done it. You didn't do it before or after. 
I did one before oh, I, in practice. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. That was fun to watch. Oh. And then also, can we talk about the flip on the back roll on the way in? I don't know. Just fucking around having fun. And I just trying to nose press down and I just caught the snow and it threw me forward. And I think just amidst like all the adrenaline and like the like don't can't fuck up moment. I mean, I naturally do this in the first place, like the bounce back thing. Mm-hmm. But I think I don't know how I did it like that. But I think just like in the midst of it, my body just like knew what to do and like threw my legs up so I could get my hand back and like kind of do the kick up thing you do, mm-hmm. like you know, like the like like karate people are like. They like fall down and then they kick back up. Oh yeah, karate people. <laughs> karate people, yeah. <laughs> karate people do do that. They do do that. Yeah, it's like you know. Then there was that much. meme with the rock, right? That was yeah. all over the place. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> da, da, da. That was awesome. Yeah. Also, I think also another funny part. I think those heart shaped glasses, <clears throat> my sister bought that morning. I think she. Bought, she because she bought those heart shaped glasses that morning. I don't know f- what reason for, but she said that she lost them that night too, like before the comp. So I think they might have been hers. That's some divine shit yeah, right that's, there. That's that's that divine. is. And then also, I lost them <laughs> right after the <laughs> event, <laughs> and s- I guess someone from X Games hit me up like three months ago. Sometime this winter it was like, hey. I have your heart shaped glasses. Like I can send, like I was like, oh my god, yo, can you send those to me? Like I need those. Put those in a frame. Yeah, yeah, dude, that's like, crazy. That's crazy. Like, they found them. I think it, I think I sent them my address and everything, and um, yeah, I never heard from them again. <laughs> and then, but my friend in Utah, like who lives here, who actually <laughs> is holding my big pink board right now, um, he said he was at a party, and some chick had the heart shaped glasses but they wouldn't give them to him so they're a thing in utah they are somewhere in utah really wow did she buy him on some slc she buy him on like a sports memorabilia website (laughs) where you buy like (laughs) signed tom brady jerseys (laughs) so they're floating around somewhere someone has them i don't know but they're floating okay we got a thing let's put a let's put a little sos out on that if you if you see the zeb powell heart sunglasses uh he'd like them back yeah uh, honestly i think it'd be funny just like it's a it's funny that it's a thing now like i don't know if you guys see him try if to, there was try, a- to, try to steal him i don't even you have to give them to me but like just just, just keep this going yeah get them if there's ever like a legitimate <laughs> snowboard hall of fame that would be a nice item to, like, as you browse through oh zed pal's heart-shaped glasses okay oh, wow, yeah one more thing before we get off of uh knuckle huck talk i heard somewhere that you doubled your instagram following overnight that night yeah. People were rocking with you after that. Yeah, I like I screenshot before and screenshot it after to like just like to pinpoint where. After Knucklehawk, like my phone just exploded. Like Snapchats, Instagram was insane. Like the stories, like the story mentions were insane. Like so many phone calls, so many texts. I think I didn't even respond to half the text because I couldn't get through all of them mm-hmm. and stay like relevant. I popped you happening. off. You got back to me. I mean, yeah, but there's like, uh, sorry for the people who I didn't get back to, because I know there's a lot of them. (laughs) I'm sorry. It's just so many. And you doubled from what to what? What are we talking? I think 30 to 60. That's a heavy double. Let's hop into another guest question from your boy, Jake Cantor. Hey, what's up, Bombo Squad? Jake Cantor here. Got two quick questions for my buddy Zebulon Powell. (sighs) First one being... Who are the two craziest people to slide in your DMs after X Games? And second one being, why did you make the switch from Nitro to Burton this year? Hold balls, wild brows. Catch you later. Two great questions. Made in Tokyo send my DMs. Nice. What's that? Sorry. Rapper? I, oh, okay. I'm, I'm out, of, out of the loop. I apologize. Uh, you know, well, it's just spelled it's like, it's spelled P. differently though, like. It's spelled weird. You, okay. You Made in TKYO. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rolly? I know what you're talking about. Yep, yep. You got that Rolly song? Okay. Um, he is in my DMs. He fucks with snowboarding what, what does, right now. What does a guy like him say to you? He said, congrats. All exclamation marks. Um, something like, stay up. I like, hope you're doing well. well that's cool. Yeah. I, th- I, th- I think I said, thank you. Like I remember I saw that and was like, holy shit. Like, that's insane. Like, cause I think that was like the first fam- famous person to hit me up after. 
And then, I don't know about the second one. Part two of the question was in regards to the switch from Nitro to Burton. That was a hard one. I like love Bur- I like love Nitro. Like it was like such a fun run. I mean, I pretty much just came down to like like Burton tripled their price pretty much. The Burton factory is in Burlington where I'm living right now, so there's convenience there. And then like their like management team like holds it down pretty hard. At X Games, I got to hang with them. Or, like they kind of let me come hang with them, and they were super cool. And, um, yeah, that's the main reason. Also, yeah, Jake's on the team. Like Jake Cantor. Who yeah. Just, yeah. Luke's on the team. Um, let's see. NC Logue. Winkleman. Yeah. And then also, it's like, it, like, Burton and Red Bull kind of, like, it's like, they, like, didn't really pressure me to, but, like, I think, they're like, Red Bull pretty much was like, yeah, like, it's pretty convenient if you're with Burton, too. So, like, it's just, like, let us know if you make that switch. So, like, there was, like, I don't know, just kind of stacked up the reasons, too. And they're Burton. They're kind of the top of the totem pole, if you look at Also, it. yeah, it was, like, it was a crazy COVID year. And, like, and I'm, <laughs> I said no, like, three times. But they just, like, kept coming back. And, like, I remember I was, like, with my manager, Ross. And you're, like, R- Ross Powers. <laughs> Ross Powers. And, like, they said no, like, three times. Like, they were coming at me, like, since the summertime. Since I was riding Big Pink. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I almost made the switch that summer before I went out. And if I made the switch then, I would not have, like, rode, ridden Big Pink at all this, that summer. So I'm glad I didn't do it then. But don't want to do this. Let's just give them a, like, crazy number that they probably won't take. And then we gave them that number. Or, like He's like, all right. Like, my, like, Ross is like, okay, we can just give them this number and, and say take it or leave it. So we gave, like, gave them a crazy number, and then they were like, yeah, sure. So one of the coolest things I saw you do with the Burton crew was you guys did a shoot with – ASAP Ferg. Mm. Yes. That looked out of fucking hand. <laughs> so sick. Yeah, what was the vibe? So <laughs> Except for there was one guy in there, uh, Stan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> kind of whack. I don't know, man. <laughs> Stan played all the, all the clips on his phone, yeah. all the freestyles. Yeah. It was so pretty funny. sweet. That was sick. Yeah, he got, he got a heavy clip, heavy freestyle clip. Yeah, that was so fucking sick. I got to ride with... ASAP Verg and his crew. It was funny how that came up. I was like, I had no idea this was happening. And then I was like on the intro, like on an intro Zoom with Burton. And Nigro was just chilling there, like kind of on, on his phone. Zach Nigro. He's um, one of the Burton managers. <laughs> just like kind of looking down in the airport, like kind of just like low key while we were all talking. And he texted me. He's like, yo. And I was like, what's up? And he's like, how you doing? I'm like, good. He's like, you want to come to this... Um, ASAP Ferg shooting Aspen just randomly. I'm like, of, of course. <laughs> <laughs> like, duh. That's a stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> of course I want to come to the ASAP Ferg. Like a uh, little air horn. <laughs> yeah, give him an air, air horn, but then also the for the stupid question, let's give him a an gun air horn. <laughs> yeah. A little combo, combo yeah. platter. Sandwich platter. Yeah. It was something like that. And I was like, yeah, of course. So, yeah, fast forward to that. It was, like, just so sick. ASAP Ferg is, like, one of the like, ASAP, part of the ASAP mob, like, they're huge in rap. Definitely listen to a lot of his music. Um, so it was just sick to see him in the flesh and hang out with him. Was he was like, able to go down the hill? Did he snowboard? rip or what? Dude, he he did the best out of his whole crew for sure. It was crazy because uh, um, he's I like asked him and he's like I did it like once, like once or twice when I was a kid, but like didn't really do it, I guess. So yeah, like. Most most of his crew is like kind of struggling. What are we talking? Back seven? Is he getting a Burton Connie coming in the mail? Uh, <laughs> what are we talking? Front yeah, nine? Let's get him on the fucking team. <laughs> <laughs> is the gay kid getting a Connie? What's going on? Uh, no, was he able to like rip and d- turn and jump and all that? Um, so like we took him to the like bunny slope, and um, yeah, he just kind of started going. He didn't really know how to stop, but like he could make it down the hill, like and kind of chill. And, like, then we took him to the bigger, like, we were, everyone was so stoked on that, but then we took him to the bigger, like, the bigger hill. It was, like, the small, like, bunny lift, like, right above that, like, right above the bunny slope. And, um, yeah, he just started going. And, like, I just happened, like, be filming because I was, like, oh, fuck it. And, um, yeah, he just started going. And, like, I think the faster he went, like, the more he could kind of navigate and stay on his feet. He didn't really know how to stop, but, like, he was just going. So, like, he was, like, bored in, mm-hmm. like, Holding it down, like, yeah, like, and then we like kind of get to the bottom, like kind of bail out. But then like the second time we went down, like he like went, like did a few turns, 
like started mobbing and then like actually stopped. Like so he's like if he kept boarding like or like if we go on a few more trips, like he can have it down. Like like a back like, two, probably pretty quick. <laughs> Swag two, <laughs> yeah. front two, hard way two. Get him on big Big pink. Yeah, let's get him doing. Let's get him on big pink. See how he fares. <laughs> maybe, maybe, I'll, maybe get him an airbag front ten double. See how that goes. <laughs> let's get him in the backcountry. Let's get him on the bomb hole while we're at it. <laughs> you know, that'd be sick. Yeah, well, hit him up for us, right. dog. You got his digits. I saw you. He was doing half pipe airs over you guys. Uh, and or you were. You guys I was going to say you he, guys he was are, airing over these guys. You guys are doing half pipe airs yeah. over him while he was like on the deck rapping. Yeah, so. they're shooting the music video. Crazy! Oh, that's gonna be in one of his videos. Yeah, that was for their music video. Like, I don't think we had any idea that was happening. Or like, but like, we just kind of rolled up and like met them, and they're like, "Yeah, like, we're gonna do a music video. You guys want to be in it?" And we're like, Holy shit, of "What's the track? Is it out yet?" And I think it's I think it's called "Fur on My Boots." But like, uh, <laughs> "Fur on My Boots," but it's not "I'm a Pussy." <laughs> 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 that's like the <laughs> that's the um, chorus, pretty much. It's a good hook. All right. Yeah. It's a great hook. Great hook. I got on my boots, but it's not. I'm a pussy. <laughs> not, I can't wait to hear this song. Yeah, I want to uh, see this video. And yeah, see this and video. They'll be rapping that, and we'll be riding right over them. Floating right Beautiful. over them. Floating Head over them. Dude, it was crazy going into it. Like, like, like the hit for it was crazy because there was people below it. And then the snow was kind of gnarly, too. So, And we were all in a line, so like you can't like really fuck up. You can't try anything too crazy because you don't want to deck because like, they're right there. You don't want to land on Ferg mid Michael Chuck no. or something. Yeah. No, no way. I want to do Mick Twist or like, um, yeah, Michael Chuck or something. But I, it was just too gnarly. Like those like weren't easy airs, honestly, especially for me because it was backside. Mm-hmm. But um, it was so sick and dang with them like that. Um, also it was like you know like truly when worlds collide like um. Did you see the part where, like where they were dancing on the deck? Yeah, mm-hmm. it was like crazy. It was like you know, like kind of the apri, like after snowboard, like af- effect where you're chilling on the deck, you know, drinking, like co- collabed with um, like Ferg and his crew, like kind of like the Harlem roots, like doing their thing, dancing, like just like like living life. I think there was like some toast going down, like. They had, like, these sick dances that they were doing. Um, it was just really sick to see, like, two different worlds, like, like combined, like, fully like that. Fuck yeah. That's yeah. incredible. That's really cool. That's incredible. Yeah. I got a quick Patreon question along these lines. It's from Wayne. Question for Zeb. In your opinion, what does snowboarding and snow sports in general need to do to increase diversity? Um, Make cheaper products for, like, you know, kids who... I think I think it'd be sick to do like a full like starter pack, which I feel like you know it's hard to get a full a company to do a full starter pack. You know what would be in that? You know, like a lift ticket, or like like a like a week snowboarding probably, um, some cheap boots, cheap board bindings, and then like maybe they cover the pants or maybe I don't know like low quality kit for them to at least try it and like you know get through a season with. Price point, you know, everything yeah. you price need at a price point, point. Yeah. all in one. Yeah, so that's actually a really good idea. Yeah, that's the hardest part. It's like I feel like there's not that many black snowboarders because it's like most of them come from inner cities or whatever, and um, or like can't get to the mountain. But like if you like, like you see all the skaters, it's like since it's so easy to get a setup, like you can have someone hand you a setup, and all you got to do is go outside and try it, and like do it, and like so that's the hardest. That's the biggest difference with snowboarding. It's like even if you give someone a setup, it's like you gotta wait for the snow. You gotta find the right hill. It's hard to learn like with a little bit of snow on a hill. Day tickets cost a fortune if you're not at a small like home mountain. And um, yeah, it's just kind of hard to take on on your own if you don't know anything about it. Unlike skateboarding, so I think that's why there's so many prevalent black skateboarders because it's you can do it on your own. You just gotta go outside and, like like learn. And then there's like always like skaters like like I don't know. There's a lot of skaters to look up to. If we can find a way to make it more accessible for people. Uh, I have a question. Do you get a lot of DMs um, saying that you inspire a lot of other black snowboarders? Yeah, and it's honestly really overwhelming. It's crazy. That's so sick. Yeah, it's. I get a lot of them, and they're really overwhelming. And I, it's so sick to see. Dude, it's. I mean, it. you see more black snowboarders than ever, and hopefully it keeps growing, and yeah. it's fucking awesome. I can't wait to see what the future holds. 
Well, thanks for paving the way, dude. It's I can't so wait dope. to see what your future holds, man. You <laughs> I think you're headed in the right direction. You got great ideas. Yeah, I think I I, I want to definitely do stuff with that, like in know, that realm of stuff. I know you said you'd like to do some stuff to give back. I heard, yes. I was reading your New York Times interview. Kids been in the Times, huh? <laughs> which is un, which is another crazy God, feat geez. we didn't even get into. I didn't realize how crazy that was until like yeah, I that's a big to, deal. I talked to Clavin, and he's like, "Dude, that's insane." Huh, of course, Clavin it, knows that. I guess it really. I guess it really is. Yeah, damn journalist. <laughs> <laughs> damn journalist, Clavin. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I didn't really like. I was like, I remember I got hit up for it. And I was like, oh, you know, I just I do a lot of interviews, so like they kind of like the, the value point of them or like, like thought for me is saturated because like I don't really, I just do so many I don't really think about it too much. I did one with, did one with Forbes too, which I was tripping on. Doing with Forbes, yeah. jeez, dude. Yeah, so like, I didn't know. I didn't realize it's a huge deal. Yeah, I, didn't I mean, think of how, how many people read it was. cover to cover. It's every, it's it's almost it's almost like doing a bomb hole. It's yeah. Yeah. it's close. Almost, almost. Yeah, it's close. Yeah. close. Forbes is just under the bomb yeah. hole. Forbes, too. yeah, right below us in one cup. Oh. You guys are killing it. Thank you. Uh, well, we've been chatting for a minute. But before we do, we always like to hit hot takes. So the goat or the Michael Jordan of snowboarding. Who you got? I feel like modern day um, Mark McMorris. It's a great answer. Running up so many contests as lo- as well as like not like not like he's good in the backcountry, slope style. I think he's got he, he's got he's in the streets. He's in the oh, streets. Oh yeah, he's too. got street clips. He's got the street clips. And he's kind of the shit. As he's well, the shit as a human. Um, insane surfer too. Just mm-hmm. I don't know. He's just running everything at the moment. So. That's like my my modern day one. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what do you think about the beaver slap in the lift line when you pick your board up and <laughs> smack the snow off it? Definitely thought I was a shit doing that when I was like <laughs> nine or ten. <laughs> Letting it bark. Um, I don't Let know. Bark. I feel like I still do it sometimes just to get the snow off my board. Not loud though. I don't try to be like you know. I don't like make it a thing. It's just like. What do you feel about this flex? Uh, the edge drag across the parking lot. I just laugh. I don't know. <laughs> exactly what I just did there. <laughs> You're like, oh, there you go. Okay, there you go. Nice. I mean, I don't know. I don't hate on it. <laughs> I just think it's cool. It's a, it's a good flex. Nice. It's definitely kind Respect. of. I saw Zach Hale doing it the other day. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what was it? What was it called? The edge drag. No, but what he he called it something. Oh, he called it the big bear drag or something. <laughs> the big bear he was, drag. He was like, joking though, obviously. But yeah, <laughs> he's like hit, he hit a big bear. Like if you guys ever want to like really feel cool riding on the way to the resort, just kind of like as you're walking through the parking lot, just hit a little light drag. A little <laughs> light big. Bear Let him know drag. you don't give a shit about your board. <laughs> just look over. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, and uh, one question we have for you is: if you had a Hollywood actor, one actor. To play the role of your life, who would it be? Yeah, Wesley Snipes, of course. Woo! <laughs> but, yeah, that is so, a banger answer. Yeah, so, New yeah. Jack City, Blade. First one that comes to my mind is Wesley <laughs> Snipes, and um, that's my friend. That's because um, only because. Uh, all right, so, yeah, you remember a few years ago at the launch when Stan and Pat Bridges found that hat, the Red Bull like leather leather cap. Yep. He yeah. bought it at the liquor store, actually. I was with him when he bought that. Yeah, exactly. And um, I remember seeing that on, like, Graham and stuff. I'd be like, oh, that's funny. Like, I think they put it on, like, Hales. Like, she was wearing it. And, um, yeah, like, later after that, um, I, like, I won the scoff stop at Corinthia. So I made it to the um, the Masters, the finals, scoff championships in Utah. And I was staying at the Air Blaster house with them. I think that's the first time I really met I Stan. I remember you rocking that thing, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the first time I really met Stan, too. Um, but, yeah, he had the hat, and, like, I think we were just laughing about it. Like, he showed me and we laughed about it, and then he gave it to me. <laughs> so I started running that thing a lot, actually. I liked it. It's good like, look, huh? It's, it's, like, comfy hat. And like, I think it flew off a lot, but I still liked it. And um, so, yeah, I started wearing that, like, a lot, actually. And I think one of my friends was like, yo, like, you look like Wesley Snipes. <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that's why it popped, a, that's why that popped my head like the second you like said that. I wish I I wish my my act I wish Wesley Snipes would play <laughs> myself. That's Patrick a, that's, Swayze's just as bad. Yes, I would take Swayze for sure. Yeah, I mean, dude, we've we've done it, man. We've been chatting for a minute now. Before we get out of here, do you want to thank anybody? Thank the parents, of course. Not possible without them. 
none of this was without them. Um, oh, your mom, honestly, side note, your mom wants to know when you're coming home when I spoke <laughs> with her. She hasn't seen you in a while. <laughs> yeah. She's, I said, do you want to ask a guest question? You go, I have a guest question. <laughs> I want to know when Zeb is coming home. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really keep her updated that much. She's got to beat stuff out of me. Like yeah. send like 20 texts for yep. me to respond. Classic. Or sometimes. Sometimes I'm like in the mood, but other times like she tries to like ask me something and I just like, yeah, she has to respond. Ask me like five times before <laughs> I'll respond. At that point, I'm just like, I'll just wait to call her sometime. But um, yeah, I think I'm coming home in like two weeks. I got a vacation to Two weeks with a question mark vacation. is going to be the answer. <laughs> two weeks with an upward inflicting tone. <laughs> <laughs> questioning the actual two weeks. Yeah. We'll see what happens first. If the episode comes out or if you make it home. <laughs> All right. So either way she'll see you. Yeah, thank the parents. Um I wanna thank SMS, Ross Powers, Scott Johnston, all my coaches back then. Definitely not possible without them. Um the Sutton Bros from Catalogy. <laughs> They started it all off. Chris Pruitt for teaching me how to snowboard and int- introducing me to them. And um, all my sponsors nowadays. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, Zeb, man, we want to thank you yes. for coming on the show and inspiring us and an entire generation of snowboarders and snowboarders to come. Thank you so much for having me, guys. This has been so fun. <laughs> yeah, it's been a good time. Uh, don't go that hard on the sniffing salts next time. Yep. Simmer down a little bit. <laughs> Simmer oh, down. Should have told me. <laughs> that's our fault. Hey, that's our fault. We all learned a lesson. We all learned something today. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for listening and watching. We really appreciate you tuning in each and every week, and we will see you next Wednesday over and out from the bomb hole.